What's up insiders? In this video, we will talk about YouTube and Facebook. I'm gonna go over seven reasons why YouTube and Facebook did not work for your business. I see business owners make these mistakes all the time. We actually helped start it quite a few YouTube channels last year and I have seen few wannabe influencers in the roofing industry who have failed and stopped producing content. I wanna explain to you step by step from least important factors to the most important factors why it did not work for you or what mistakes to avoid if you wanna go on YouTube, if you wanna go on Facebook, if you wanna become expert in your field online, if you wanna become influencer, public figure, please watch very carefully because this is not what you think it is. I promise to you, I've walked the walk, I talked the talk, I've been in this space for about six years, it changed my life, I will never be the same, I even sold my construction business to do this full time, but I also see people are struggling early on. So here are my top seven reasons why YouTube and Facebook did not work for your business. Number seven, you have good production quality, but very low content quality. It's all about yourself. It's all about shot, that cinematic shots. I've seen it way too many times. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna mention the names, but I've seen one influencer in the roofing space who did have a roofing company, did start a show and went all in and bought all the cameras and green rooms and you know, amazing, amazing quality. But it was all about him it was all about you know, like getting out of the vehicles. Listen, your audience do want to see that kind of stuff. And I do uh, fight my videographers not to be too cinematic. Let me explain. Uh, if you public figure, like if you made it, if you're a Hollywood actor, if you're a TV host, uh, if you're a famous YouTuber, if you have huge following, it's okay every once in a while to make it all about you, to do like some kind of cool reel. People do like cool stuff, but if you don't have a following, you will come off as egoistical and um, selfish person who's making content about yourself. Videos that you're about to make, the channel that you're about to start should not be about you, but about people who will be watching. And what your audience wants to see, what questions you're gonna answer, what would they type to see your video, to, sh to for you to show up and search. Nobody gonna type in like, cool roofer, cool plumber. Think about the problems you can help them solve. So that's one of the biggest problems. And I went through a lot of videographers, freelancers that would come into me and they're like, let's do this. Like, listen, you can take your phone and you can film your expertise and it'll be the best videos you'll ever done. People are hungry for good quality content, yes, but content over quality. Don't focus too much on what cameras to buy, what lighting to have. In this day and time, as long as they can see you and they can hear you, they will follow you if you have good content. But if you have $30,000 in equipment filming you and it's all about you and it's all about, look at my cup of coffee, look at this, look at that, they can unfollow you very quick because you are not delivering value. It's all about value, it's not about quality of production. On the opposite of that, number six is very low production quality. So you don't have to be the best, you will never be the best, you know, because the sky is the limit when it comes to what you can do. But some people just don't put any energy at all to make anything good. Like, you know, if you wanna film every single video, just you walking on the street and people barely can hear you, well, they're also gonna unfollow you. At the very least, invest in good microphones. Because mic and sound is the most important thing in a video, to be honest with you, because we do listen when we drive, and if they cannot hear you, they will skip, they will go, nobody gonna try super hard for 30 minutes to try to listen to you. The audio have to be good and crisp. If you're filming on your phone and your phone is 20 feet away, please, fix the audio problem. At the very least, you can put AirPods in your uh, ears so you know people actually can hear. While you're far, they don't have to work very hard. And I see those mistakes with the young um, 
YouTubers are very often, and if you fix that, I mean, I'm talking about $200 solution, you know, your quality will go straight up. So it doesn't have to be extremely good, extremely high budget, but it has to be decent enough for people to see you and listen to you. Reason number five, you do not appreciate my time. If you starting podcast, if you starting show, if you starting reviewing products, and I've got this feedback early on many times too, you have to cut down to the chase. You cannot talk about your guests or your sponsors or how many episodes you have done. Nobody cares about that. If I'm tuning in to you, like first, 15, 20 seconds is the most important. Recently, I was listening to Mr. Beast keynote and he was sharing his tips and tricks how he does it. And I remember uh, he explained, he has this one video where uh, Bounty Hunter was running after him. Video starts and he's like, in this video, it, Bounty Hunter chasing me, if he gets me, he gets, I don't know, $500,000. And he started running. First five, 10 seconds. If that squad successfully hunts me down before the end of the day, then you get this 100 grand, run, run, run. And I'm thinking to myself and about my audience, most people, if they would have that budget to spend, if they have that agenda, we probably spend three minutes explaining. It's like, hey, in this video, here's the guy we would make full introduction, cut it to the chase. If you hook their attention to the point from the first couple seconds, people will watch it. And what I see a lot with the startup YouTubers, they start a podcast and for the first three, four minutes, there's zero value exchanged with the audience. It's, hey, Welcome to 152nd episode of my show. I can't believe it's been this much. Well, it's all good, but it's also one minute of my time listening to your rant obsessed about your show. I did not click on that. It was like, well, let me tell you about my guests, but before we do, let me introduce you to my sponsors. Uh, again, I don't mind you having sponsors, but I'm here for my selfish reasons. People are selfish. When we scroll, when we click, when we tune in, our time is valuable. Why did I click on it? Not to listen about your sponsors. Please respect people time. It's very, very important. I don't have a rule how long video should be. Golden time on YouTube is about seven to 13 minutes. On Facebook, it's a little bit shorter. Attention spans there is way shorter because so many options to keep scrolling. But overall, what I would say is when you make shorter videos for the same topic, you will win. Be very cautious of the feedback and make videos as short as possible, respect people's times. Reason number four, you are making content for yourself, not for your audience. People will see right through it. So many people think that, you know, you can fake it before you make it on social, you really can't. People see your intentions, people see your character, people see if you have audience best interest in mind or your best interest in mind. Like when I make my videos, I don't ask myself what's there for me. I always want to give 10 times more than I ever receive. You know, making videos like this will never make me money, will never make me popular, but it can help you to start your journey, uh, change your life. I'm a teacher in heart, that's my background. I'm always focused on my students and I always wanna students have better life than I have. I share everything I know and my best advice is always free. If someone wants to do business with me, sign up for my private classes, courses and stuff like that, that's totally normal. Like my time is valuable. If someone wants to hire me, you know, I have products uh, for sale as well, but I don't make videos to sell my products. And it shows, and people know it, people who know me closely and my audience know that this YouTube channel, this free advice, it's not to monetize, but to educate. Make sure you always have your audience best interest in mind, not your best interest in mind. That leads us to point number three. You're trying to sell too much. Again, I love uh, Gary Vee's philosophy is give, 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 ask. Every once in a while, you have to ask. But if you're selling in every video, people just turn cold. Like nobody likes to be sold. Nobody likes to be, uh, you know, sucked into some kind of gimmicky campaign. And we all hate videos where, you know, title is very promising. You start watching a video, you know, it's very promising and then like, well, if you want more, it's here. Well, unfortunately, you know, it's not very clean. It's not good business practice. 
and I don't recommend doing it. Have your audience best interest in mind, but also don't try to abuse the audience by selling in every video. And so many people starting their content game just to sell and people see it. The best YouTubers, the best public figures, they are given the best advice for free and people do choose to do business with them without them trying to sell them. Don't try to sell online, it just doesn't work. Second biggest reason why you're not successful on YouTube and it did not work out for you because you're not an expert. Maybe you are too early. The best analogy I can show you, it's probably would be Instagram. On Instagram, you see really good athletes. You see people with the talent, you know, who develop themselves five, 10 years, who have, you know, gymnastics background and they show you gymnastic tricks. You know, power lifters, they lift heavy and you're like, how, how does he do it? And then you have wannabe athletes who wants to show off where is nothing else to show off. They're not experts yet. They sign up for the gym two or three weeks ago and they start posting and then like, well, why are people not following? Because you suck. The same in business. Before you start teaching, make sure you master your game. I started this channel when I was already five years in business. You know, it takes 2000 hours to become a professional. I don't think I posted single lifting video like at CrossFit for the first three years. And then I just wanted to document my journey. And usually I do it in stories mainly for myself, a little bit to motivate my community to work out, to hit the gym in the morning. But I did not feel like posting anything, you know, until my weights were impressive. You know, once you start deadlifting 500 pounds, you know, of course you want to document the journey and stuff, but I'm not teaching anyone, you know, CrossFit. I am, I did go get a class, you know, I can train CrossFit if I want to take that path. This is just not my game, but I do want to motivate people to join CrossFit. So I will share free advice. Uh, you know, people hit me all the time. It's like, Dimitri, how do you do this? I'm like, but again, I'm an expert in that field now because I've done it for five years. I'm an expert at this because I've done it for five years. As a matter of fact, this Roofing Insights channel is people ask me all the time, Dimitri, why are you not talking about commercial roofing? Because I'm not an expert. I will never talk about any topic that I don't know nothing about. I'm not a commercial roofer, I'm not gonna talk about it. I do understand marketing, I do understand branding, I do understand business, I do understand accounting, I do understand you know, how shingles are made and who makes the best shingle. I do understand common sense about homeowners purchasing the roofing uh, system and I can give really good advice there. That's my true expertise. And I think I'm a best at that game. I don't think anyone can review products better. I don't think anyone has background that I do in what I've seen. I can accumulate all of that in the form of advice to people. But so many people fail because you just wanna give advice just to build audience. And it doesn't work that way. Think about one topic, one area. What would people wanna pay you to learn from you and make free videos about that. And number one reason why most people fail at YouTube and Facebook game in personal and in business because they just did not give it enough effort. I've seen so many people, like my journey is very clear. In the roofing industry, anybody can do what we do. Social media and YouTube have brought me so much business. It changed my life in my roofing company and roofing insights and everything I've done. I'm a different man today because of it. I've showed it to people, I've showed the journey and nobody wants to walk. Everybody wants instant success. You have to put in the work. Uh, I love this book. If you're planning to start a YouTube channel, Daryl Eve is the guy uh, to follow. Mr. Beast uh, wrote preface to this book. One of the things that he explained, he said, your first 100 videos will suck. Well, the problem is nobody wants to make first 100 videos. Here's what most business owners think. They see that all the tension and all people addicted to Facebook. They're like, okay, people are here now. I have to try it. They see that everyone's Googling and watching YouTube videos all day long. They're like, okay, I see that this is happening and I feel like I have to get in on it. They buy a camera, they hire a videographer, they do three videos and they're like, okay, we tried it, didn't work. Back to, you know, to whatever you were doing before, maybe try billboard again, maybe go and print, maybe 
print a few more flyers. I mean, what are you gonna do? This is where action is. This is where all interactions, all the transactions are in the modern world is. And you think that making three, four videos really will make a difference. You should not even think about any decent following or any decent engagement for the first 100. I have made 750 videos just on this channel. And before that, I made another probably 150 uh, and my roofing business. It took me two weeks to record my first video, problem with the product that we were having and were refusing to install, two weeks. I keep editing and keep filming. Now I can make five videos a day, at least film them and the guys will keep editing them for an entire week. If you go to the gym and you work out and you look at the mirror, you will not see the difference. But do that for five years, you will feel like you're a different man. And if you follow this channel, you can see the difference between 2022, 2015, and everything in between. Every year you can see the improvements. We build new studios, we change new cameras, we try new stuff, you will get better. You know, today we're getting 1,000 subscribers a month and probably gonna be getting more of it, but we're never, we're focused on that. We are never have done videos just to be popular. You know, our channel is not the biggest, but this channel is provide, you know, five, six full-time jobs today. You have options. There's a lot of gurus. There's a lot of people on the internet you can follow and you follow us for some weird reason. And we grateful and thankful for your attention because we are here for you. And by the way, we have started many channels too. We, we did come to a lot of roofing companies we trained them, we did high quality content. Every business, especially construction business, have to have at least 10 videos on their channel. It cannot be boring, it has to be professional, it has to be cool, it has to be nice, it has to be professional quality, business quality. I wanna get to know you before I get to know you. But that's not even a YouTube game yet, that's just like a business card online. That's a very, very minimum that everyone has to do. But I want you to follow, if you're in the roofing industry, follow Eustace Roofing, follow Monarch Roofing, see what they're doing. Both, actual company of the year, both companies of the year understand this game. They're very consistent, they're educating consumers, they attract talent because they understand this game. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. They struggle like you struggle, but they're killing the game. So those are biggest reasons why it didn't work for you. Nothing to do with YouTube or Facebook. Those two are not going anywhere. Those two are here to stay. The question for you is, what are you gonna do about that fact that we are addicted to those platforms? We wanna do business with companies we find there. Will we find you? And if you need my help, I'm gonna put my information below. I can help you with your YouTube channel. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I will help you any way I possibly can. Give it a like, ask me anything on YouTube in comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.